We start tonight with a live look out at Fort Collins. Nope, not Fort Collins, just kidding. City of Denver. Cloudy, blue skies this afternoon. For the first time in what feels like a long time, we finally got a day of sunshine. Lauren, it was glorious. Yeah, and it's actually the first day in a long time where I'm happy to be outside in the Nine News backyard. I could stay out here the rest of the evening. We're going to have a nice night ahead to finish up our Father's Day with clear skies, calm winds, and very mild lows. In the meantime, we're still having very seasonal temperatures finally right around where we should be this time of year. Let's go ahead and take a look at our daily almanac and you can see that we made it to around 83 degrees today in Denver. Our average high this time of year is 84 degrees, so right where we should be. Same goes for our lows. Our record high was 100 degrees this date in 2012. Maybe you remember that, but what I really want to point out is our yearly precipitation. 11.66. Well, our year really precipitation for the entire year last year was 11.92. So we're only halfway through the year and we're about to uh, match what we saw all of last year combined. Right now, DIA though dry, a little bit of cloud cover there, 81 degrees. Winds coming in from the east southeast at 14 miles per hour as we're seeing a little bit of a breezy afternoon there. We are dry though as we take a look at our HD Doppler radar. What we are going to watch for through the rest of the afternoon and into tomorrow is going to be an air quality alert and that's going to be for the urban corridor an ozone action day. So this might be perfect timing to think about public transportation and parking your car for a little bit as our air quality goes down. But overnight we will see a beautiful evening. If you want to have that outdoor barbecue with dad to finish off fa your Father's Day, I think today's the perfect day for that. Hot sunny weather returns tomorrow for Juneteenth and we do have some storm chances returning to the forecast. Of course, I'll have all of those details just ahead of my full seven day. Lauren, thank you. Two people are dead today after a crash this afternoon in Arapahoe County. It happened on in Centennial on East Dry Creek Road between South Yosemite and South Alton Way. Deputies say the driver lost control, hit a parking garage, and that car burst into flames. The driver and the passenger both died. Deputies say that road will stay closed for a while. A man is dead after a shooting in the Park Hill neighborhood overnight. It happened a little before 10 o'clock last night. Police say there were two scenes. They were just blocks from each other. 35th and Forest and Thrill and Hudson, just north of MLK Junior Boulevard. Police say three people went to the hospital. This morning, police say one of them died. Officers say they have not made any arrests in this case. They're working to learn what exactly led up to that shooting. CDOT is still working to clean up a Boulder County rock slide. This happened on Highway 7 between Allen's Park and Lyons. They expect that road to stay closed until at least Tuesday. Last week, CDOT says about 2,000 tons of rock fell in that slide, causing large boulders along with dirt and debris to cover up about 60 feet of road. Hundreds of families in Montbello may soon have to search harder to get their food after funding was denied to one nonprofit. Our Angeline McCall spoke with the organization about what kind of impact this will have on the families they serve. And then it's a, uh, they want you to go around that building. Brothers Elon and Dini Hodge. Yeah, you good, boss. It's clear. Have been helping their parents run nonprofits struggle for love from the beginning. You got it set up yet? Today's Reach for Peace picnic. I got some burgers and some dog. Includes free food. So that's what we do. Reach for peace, reach for love. So that's what we're trying to do. That ability to give free food, though, is now in jeopardy. As people may not know, Montbello doesn't have a grocery store. So we are the um, uh, the Sacks of Love Food Pantry is the only reliable source for some people to get fresh produce and fresh food and fresh milk and eggs. Struggle of Love counts on grant money filtered down to them from the Montbello Organizing Committee to distribute food five times a week. There will be a huge impact on this community because you know, food is a problem and um, a lot of people have a lot of food insecurities and we just don't know the next steps. The Montbello Organizing Committee applied for the over $1 million grant through the city. And it's just a, a huge loss to the community, period. Latoya Petty says the grant instead went to other organizations, meaning Struggle of Love misses out too. It's very frustrating and we're looking like, how can you not fund this initiative? How can you not fund making sure that kids have a meal every day, making sure that our residents can eat and feed their families? July 31st will be their last day before their current funds run out, leaving their team wondering what people will do to get food on the table. You know, I see these people every day and, and we're building a bond and, and I'm helping them out. So it's very devastating to know that eventually this will all end. 
Young people were also employed through Stacks of Love, meaning they're also out of a job. The organization says those jobs are critical in their anti-violence efforts to make sure that kids have something to do in the summer with a little bit of income as well, especially when they aren't in school. Certainly. So a lot of different impacts, really, with this lack of funding. Yeah, they're really concerned, and they were also talking about how they have uh, several migrant families that come as mm -hmm. well, meaning, you know, people who are a little transient, perhaps, who might be moving on quickly, but they're still relying on that food source to get, you know, food and make sure that they can eat every day as well. Sure. Angeline, thank you. Some sad news out of St. Louis tonight. One teenager died. Nine others got hurt in a shooting this weekend. It happened inside an office building in the downtown part of St. Louis where police say the teenagers were having a party. Police say one of the victims is seriously hurt from getting trampled while running from that scene. This might have been a social gathering through social media that was direct message to individuals. It was planned in advance. We're still investigating who had access to it. We're look, investigating who was responsible for the party. And then we're also investigating as we talk to witnesses. Officers say they found multiple guns at the scene. One belonged to a 17-year-old boy who is now in custody. Tomorrow is Juneteenth, June 19th, the day that just became a federal holiday two years ago and a state holiday last year here in Colorado. Juneteenth celebrates the day in 1865 when slaves in Texas finally learned they were free, two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed. Juneteenth also recognizes the continuing movement for racial and social justice in our country. Texas became the first state to make Juneteenth an official holiday back in 1980. Then President Biden signed a bill making it the 11th federal holiday in 2021. And now in more than half the states, including Colorado, Juneteenth is recognized as a state holiday. A reminder, since Juneteenth is an official holiday, there will not be mail delivery and postal service locations won't be open. Now, despite the many, many safe and joyful celebrations all around the country this weekend, there were some parties that ended in violence this weekend outside of Colorado. Overnight in a Chicago suburb, one person died and at least 22 people got hurt in a shooting during a Juneteenth celebration. Two people are in critical condition. I've never been in anything like this, honestly. I just, honestly, I have a headache from the whole commotion. All I could do is check on my, my friends and wonder, see if everything was okay. Authorities there say the motive behind that shooting is not clear and they don't have anybody in custody. And in San Diego, one person died and another was hurt in a shooting at a park during a Juneteenth celebration there. Police say it stemmed from some sort of fight between the two people. We saw our own violence at large gatherings this week. Ten people were shot the night of the Nuggets Game 5 celebration, including one of the suspects. Two people got shot after the championship parade on Thursday. In both cases, DPD told us these shootings were unrelated to the events themselves. They just happened nearby. Denver police tell us they've been working on safety plans for large events for weeks and have officers specifically assigned to cover them, including some off-duty officers who were hired by event organizers. They say the department is monitoring for any issues that could eventually lead to violence.